This is the four-hole challenge. We are down here at the beautiful Bryn Meadows Golf Club in South Wales, and we've been joined by the absolute legends, one of the greatest boxers of all time. It's Mr. Joel <laughs> Kalzaghi, mate. Thank you so much for doing this. Pleasure, mate. Look forward to it. Yeah, how is your golf? We'll sort of find out. I'm a bit rusty. They say I'm a bit rusty, mate. Yeah. Let's hope, this, uh, let's hope the sun stays out. It's a lovely day for it, isn't it? Beautiful. And what a golf course, by the way. I'm absolutely buzzing. Four yeah. holes, whoever wins, wins. You know nice, yeah, 100%. Let's do it. Let's go. Whoa! <laughs> I'll do. As it is. It's coming down. Yep. All right. That's all right. <laughs> got the big stick out. Yeah, you go. Here we go. In one. In one. Straight down. Come on. Oh, nice shot. Oh. Oh, mate. Yeah, that's a proper <laughs> shot. There you go. Yes. Go on, man. What a way to start. Oh. Joe, again, thanks so much, mate. It's an absolute Pleasure, privilege mate. to have you on the golf course. Um, how long have you been playing golf for and who got you into it? Yeah, I, um, I started playing golf about, um, let me think, about 95, 96. Yeah. Um, started playing with my dad. I live next, right next to like a pitch and putt course, a nine old pitch and putt course, and yeah. um, I used to love it. So we, I'll be honest, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't good, especially dad, but we loved it. It's all rain, about sleet, fun, it? it's all about rain, fun. sleet, or snow. I mean, we actually been on the course and it was snowing. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a hack around. You yeah. know what? And um, started playing that, at that time um, a lot, and then around '97, '98. Beat you bang in 97 and step, play, kept playing golf sometimes twice a day. I go home train, play golf, hack around, go back to the gym. And um, I sustained this elbow injury. Right. And this elbow injury was a pain. I mean, I've already had, always had bad hands, but this elbow injury it didn't allow me to spar because if I extended it, it would hurt my elbow. Right. Um, I had caught zone injection, seen all these specialists, and I was like, I can't spar, man, you know what I mean? Um, I can't train properly. Yeah. And um, after seeing all these specialists, I tried to work out how to improve my elbow anyway, cut long story short. I, um, I stopped playing golf. <laughs> so I must see how badly I was playing. So I stopped playing golf, mate, and then guess what? My elbows were covered. So your boxing career nearly ended. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> that is it nearly ended for, for me hacking around daily. Um, on the pitch and putt course. Undefeated Very champion. Very could, could have finished on a pitch and putt. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that was it. And I, I, to be honest, since then, although I love golf and obviously, yeah. as you can see, my, I've gone right down regards to my how decent I was. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so now we're retired from boxing. I play once every three years. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Shot. Yes, yeah, here we go. You've got to be happy with that. That's my back <laughs> to love, hey. back to reality. Not far, eh? not far mate. Oh. No <laughs> sand wedge. I'll have to try and uh, do this with my... Let's hope you don't go in the sand then. Oh, so what should I use? I'd go... Oh, we got a nine What the viewers say, they say here is like a nine or an eight. Just sort of punch it along. Punch it along? Yeah, Ooh. punch it along, boxer. Do you know what I mean? Oh, this is just going to be a bit of a guess, this one. That's what I get underneath it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> hey, I will take it. I will take that one. Thank you. <laughs> Who needs a sandwich? You've got nine iron, right? Unbelievable. <laughs> so, Joe, quite a lot of boxers have got into golf, haven't they? You've got Bellews right into it now. You're good self. You're a good mate, Darren Barker. Yeah. You're not so good, mate, Carl Frotch, but you know, they're all they're all starting to play. Why do you think they? I think it's just uh, it's just an, an awesome game. You know, you haven't got to be good at golf to enjoy it. Yeah. You know, I think it's. Uh, I used to have, I used to love going out with my dad and that. And uh, you know, Darren came came here not long ago, and um, 
he hammered me, but still, it was uh, it's just good fun, you know, yeah. just good fun, you know, especially when you're uh, exports, when you have a lot of time in your hands. Also, it was very competitive. Yeah. I think it's when you got a handicap, you could. So when you, <laughs> you could, I'd go off 28 or 36, right? <laughs> I cheat. What? Yeah. What are you going off today, by the way? Just because. Well, so, well, what's your handicap? Well, it's it, what are you? officially it's 15 points. Okay, I'm a, I'm 28 then today. <laughs> <laughs> but when you play when, like you, when you play with Darren, uh, this is Darren Barker, and th thank you, Darren Barker, for sorting this out. Unbelievable. Are you too proper competitive? Are you like not too, like, not uh, too bad? We wasn't too bad. He knew it was my first time back, so it yeah. uh, wasn't too bad. But I think it, you know, it always gets a bit competitive, and that's with a handicap. That's when you like to cheat as well. <laughs> Lose against the arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going for the eight. Little punch and Judy. <laughs> Roll down. Nice. Roll down. It's a good shot. Roll down. Oh. Go on. Roll. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> good shot, man. <laughs> see, I couldn't find the putter, so I managed to find this thing here. As you can see, it's uh, Antiques Roll Show. Um, it's a collectible. That is proper old, that. That is really old, You should probably turn to the Antiques Roll Show. You might get a few bob. Let's look professional. Yeah. <laughs> Wait there, guys. Let's Do look what? professional, guys. Wait there. We're going to check the wind. Yep. <laughs> hmm. It's pretty straight there, maybe you think? Yeah, I think so. Let's get the old antique out, see how it gets on. Come on. Oh, oh God, he's giving it, it some. Oh, that was a fast scream, mate. Oh. That was absolute shocker. He's giving it some. In for five, come on. Come on, Joe, do you want it out? No, it's good. Out. Sorry, mate. Cut. Yeah, he'll try it slower. Oh! Joe Calzaghi in for six. Antique. So if I'm giving you, I'm like, so if you're a 28 handicapper, yeah. I'm giving you a shot of hole, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got to get this in yeah. for four to win the hole. Okay, six. that's it. So if you get a five, I'll get a four normally. Level. Draw, yeah. no, no pressure. Right, thank you. Take it out. No, you're Keep all right. it. Yeah, you're Take all right. it out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yes. Good. Well done. Put in. One up. Oh, well but it's a shot a hole now, so this could be tough. Right, I'm one up, uh, but Joe's just warming up. It's going to be tough. This he's got a shot to hold, so I've got to play well. I've got the big dog out again. <laughs> Par five. Good oh. shot, Aish. Whoa, jeez! I tell you what, Joe. Mate, I might have to come here and watch Hustling often. me, buddy. Hustling me, mate. Absolutely <laughs> smasher. All right, Joe's got the big dog out as well. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, that's oh, a lovely. Oh. Oh. Nothing wrong with that. It's gone forward anyway, mate. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> little bit left, but nothing wrong yeah. with that. So, Joe, we found how you got into um, golf. But how did the boxing career start? How, how did, did the it boxing? all begin? Yeah, how did it begin? Yeah, so I was about well, seven, eight. Dad was a really talented footballer, you know, when he was uh, younger. I'm to be a musician afterwards, but that's a all day to explain that one. So, um, yeah, so dad was a big sports, he was a big boxing fan, and he got me, uh, I think when I was a seven, eight year old, he bought me one of these stand on speed balls, you know, the things you stand up, they yeah. come down. These, so he gave me one of them, and then he taught me out of the box. Because um, he, he got, although he's a musician and the sports, and people say he never boxed, but he could box, my daddy. I mean, my, my grandfather boxed in the, in the army, yeah. went to war at 16. Wow, yeah. Forged this signature to go set and walk the book of submarines and um, basically yeah, I taught my dad at the box, obviously play football. Um, so yeah, my dad bought me a boxing ball and then obviously see I was in, interested in it and um, he took me to a local boxing gym. So I had a Newbridge boxing Newbridge ABC boxing gym. Yeah. Um, he took me there. I still remember my first day, I was a nine years old walking in the gym. Yeah. And being a little tiny nine year old walking in the gym and seeing these you know, smelling the, like the, the, the sweat. And you know what I mean? It was a really sort of uh, old school gym, you know, no, no luxuries. And I remember going in the gym and just having that nerves. The first time I went to the gym, 
And the, the trainer at the time was uh, Paul Williams, his name was, the the boxing trainer. So my dad took me in and he, I gave me a pair of gloves and started hitting the bag. And I always remember the coach saying, like, where's, where's this kid, where's your boy boxed before? And my dad said, like, it's the first time in the gym. Right. And, he, wow. and he couldn't believe you. No, he said, come on. He said, he's open class, you know, he, he's, as I taught him. So when I went to the gym, I go, I put the hands up and everything else to start boxing. But um, yeah, that's the first time I went to the gym. And um, so it was a natural talent straight away. You did, well, you were like, this, yeah, well, this, this boy Joe can box. Yeah, yeah, you say good box, but this is the thing. My, I lost my first ever fight. And people, a lot of people don't know that. I, I lost to a boy called Chris Stock and a split decision. Yeah. Um, I remember they said he won. I remember in the ring, I had my head, my hands on the, on the post, crying my eyes out because I just lost. Yeah. Having to be consoled by my old trainer taking me out, out, the, out, of the, um, out of the ring. Also, Chris Stocks, his father was also one of the judges. So it was not fair, man. It's not fair. <laughs> oh, Chris Stocks. His father was one of the judges. <laughs> so I lost that. But I've been, I've been five times afterwards anyway. Just yeah. I thought I'd add that one in, right? I'd add that one in. But the first yeah. time I lost, yeah. It's mad because Horrible, obviously yeah. you're undefeated and you, you go for your boxing career. I lost like nine in the 120 amateur fights. Well, my last like 56 amateur fights. And that's from my father in the corner as main coach. And, um, but the thought of that first loss, that would make me feel, I thought if I'm going to box, I don't want to lose. So and maybe, that, that, maybe that was a good thing then. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cause yeah. that made me work harder. And I remember probably every single loss in amateur, my last ever loss, was as a 17 year old in the European Junior Championships wow. in 1919 in Prague. And I boxed um, a Romanian who went on to win the gold and silver in the world. So I thought I won the fight. They threw about three judges out that year because there was all Soviet Union. Right. So every, every Western fight you know, was getting bad decisions against obviously Eastern, yeah, East, yeah. the old Eastern box sort of uh, fighters. And that was the last time I lost. I remember being like a big baby, like uh, gutted, crying, and upset. Yeah. And then uh, speaking with my father, I said, uh, my dad took over as a main coach. So Paul Williams wanted me to turn professional at 17. I was like, I'm too young. Can you imagine if I turned pro at 17? No matter who you are, I was a kid. You're going to get beaten. So by age, I was a boy, yeah. you know, I was a young boy. And uh, so my father said, you know, do you want me to take over as a main coach? He was like my main coach anyway. He trained me outside the gym. It's Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. I went to boxing here for one hour. Right. But my dad would kick my <laughs> ass. <That's what> he <laughs> would kick my ass every single time, yeah. man, right? And I loved him for it. And that may be what I was. So my dad took over as the main coach. I should have went to the Olympics in 1990. Uh, 92, sorry, it was uh, Barcelona Olympics. Yeah. They, they robbed me of going to the qualifying tournament. Why? All political. Uh, we come from a local and fashionable gym. Um, all the selection committee were in car there. For, they, they selected a, a boxer that I sparred with. And basically, I had to hold my hands back. And wow. they selected him. He lost to Robin Reed in the qualifier. Robin Reed went and got a, gold, went and got a bronze medal. Um, they say win the bronze medal, but you come third, right? Yeah, so you yeah. got a bronze medal. Yeah, you only win gold, it. man. Yeah. You only win gold. You're first or you're last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're totally good night. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you first, man. So, yeah, that was it, mate. So, um, he, he started the main coach. And what can I say? We won three consecutive ABA titles. I'm just going to turn pro um, after being robbed the Olympics. And that. So, listen, go for three ABAs. Nobody's done it post war. Yeah. We looked at the records. Okay, this works, right? And, um, yeah, that was it. So wow. um, yeah, that was that. And obviously, we went on this on this journey, you know. Yeah, and here we are now. Oh, there we are, looking at my golf ball. Oh, so we didn't get hit by the fellow over there, uh, but, he, but he means business. So going back to that, like as a kid, were you like double tough at school as well? Were you like the hard kid, like? No, I didn't went to school. Believe it or not, I got bullied. What? Which was mad. Yeah. Well, well when I, I say hate, I hate, well, I hate, yeah, I hate, I bullies. hate bullies. But you know what? It's uh, I, was, I was I was in a school of semi catchment area, and. Um, yeah, it was, I won my first national title. It was like all the kids, but it was not physical. It was like name calling and stuff. I know it sounds childish now, but it, it really affected me. Oh, and so nice. boxing was just, it's weird because boxing was my escapism and my self worth. Right. That's what it gave me. You know, a young kid from, from this area, you know, we didn't have much money. Things were struggle, obviously. I'm like born in the 70s, early 70s, man. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, things were tough. You know, nothing was easy. So, yeah, um, in school, I didn't enjoy school, you know, and I, I, I learned from a young age, that's what I wanted to do, is become a boxer. I always remember speaking to my career teacher, careers, I think, before yeah. the exams, and she said to me, she said, Joe, what are you going to do when you leave school? And I said, I'm going to be a world champion boxer. And she looked at me, and she sort of took a pause and laughed. Yeah. And so went, no, but seriously, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to be a world champion boxer. <laughs> well, if you're watching Sorry, now, love, that's what I wanted to do. But if you're watching now, here he is. Um, but, do you, but do you think, oh, this is a bizarre question, but do you think the bullying 
toughened you up for, for boxing? Yeah, yeah. it's a good point actually, mate. It, it did because, you know, when I went on, I fought fighters like Jeff Lacey, you know, fight, fighters like, especially Bernard Hopkins, who is uh, really Chacha, good of, yeah. uh, of, you know, mind games, yeah. which is a big part of boxing. And um, that was very tough when it come to that. I always believed in my own ability. I know what life, I, what I've gone through, coming through, what I've done in my life. And the heart, but I didn't feel like I needed to brag, brag about being in prison, doing this as he was doing. It meant nothing to me. Mm. And I remember looking head to head and he knew he couldn't get under my skin. And, uh, you know, that, that was a bully. Yeah. And I suppose my experience as a young kid, you know, and to sort of uh, deal with bullies and, and, and being through that sort of environment in your work, yeah. it put me in good stead. So it didn't, it didn't affect me. If anything, it sort of uh, works in my favor when somebody talks too much, you know, yeah. because I suppose with, with today, it would have been different because when I was boxing, it was all about what you do in the ring. It went about, we're in about social media. There was no social media back then. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, now fighters can be world champions, but they're not world champions or pretend they're world champions just oh, by yeah, social yeah. media. You know, it's, um, you have too many want to be world champions. You know, it's a tough sport. It all, all comes to what you do in the ring. So I always got brought up in doing all the hard work. Same what you're going to do, be confident. But when it comes to it, it all matters when you get that ring and all, all of what you say, what you post, it doesn't mean anything. And that's part of the world right now. And I, I miss that. Yeah. You know, would I like it today? Yeah, probably. You probably make a lot more money, a lot more fame <laughs> by chatting shit, you know what I mean? But uh, back then, you know, you look at YouTube, it was only just out when I boxed against Hopkins and he made that famous phrase, I'll never let a white boy beat me. Yeah, yeah. And him saying that made the biggest fight in my career, you know, it was one of the biggest fights in my career. And it was made. They posted it on YouTube, yeah. and that was only just our YouTube. If that wasn't now, maybe it wouldn't have been the controversy of what he said, and it wouldn't have been as much appetite to make that fight. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's what it made. Him saying them cut words to me, yeah. a little conversation, was, and that made the fight. Wow. And it happens a lot now. It's before, you know, you make your way in the number one position, you know, you can say a bit in the press, but you, you know, very, very, you know, hear that well, you know what I mean? So you got upsides, you know, you can sell yourself, but then you get a lot of fakes. Right, but yeah. It's a lot of fakes, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's. But it's the way it is now, you know. Um, it's the way the world's changed, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's changed. It's changed. But I'm sorry to hear that you got bullies, and if you you are a bully, don't be a bully. It's fine. Rank. No, I'm the bully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second shot, par five. Come on, Joe. <sighs> Actually, hit the ball straight. <laughs> Joe's just told me there's water down by the green, so I'm gonna. I think I'm probably doing this wrong, but I'm gonna go eight iron. Just play it down. Are oh, you lucky, bro? Oh, I've got away with that. I do yeah, apologise. Go, go on. Go on. Got away good with shot, it. Good shot. So Joe, when you moved to professional boxing, you absolutely smashed it. And I, I generally believe one of the greatest of all time. So uh, thank, thank you, respect. Thank you very much. Uh, 46 and 0, what was your best fight? Which one were you most uh, proud Do you know of? what, it's, it's a tough one. You know, I had at 21 defenses, the Super Bowl title, and obviously winning the ring magazine against Hopkins. That has to be up there because, you know, um, okay, let me break it down. So if I break it down, obviously being Chris Eubank, in 97, obviously, you know, as I was coming through the ABAs, I was looking at Nigel Benn, Steve Collins, Watson, that, that magic time Eubank. Yeah. And I was going to be about their weight, so me watching them fighters. And then obviously I was supposed to fight Steve Collins, who retired two weeks before the fight. So Eubank stepped in, he was fighting anyway on the card. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, it's great to win the world title against somebody that you admire. I used to love watching Eubank coming through and, you know, I knew he was going to be a dangerous fighter. So, uh, that was obviously great to, to finally realise it. So to what was he like off, off the, uh, off, I was Chris, off the pitch, outside of the ring? I, I, I was going well with Chris. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, he gave me one of the best, you know, the best sort of um, educations I could in boxing. You know, he did take me to the one place he said he was going to take me, and that was to the well. <laughs> to the so well. I dropped him in the first round, and I'd never been 12 rounds in a proper fight, training for it, but being in a proper war for 12 rounds, you know, that was my first, I knocked everybody out in the first few rounds because back then, my hands were really good. I didn't have uh, too many hand, hand problems. Um, so the Eubank fight, obviously, you know, fast forward Jeff Lacey. Jeff yeah. Lacey was uh, was the favorite. He was also, you know, a world champion. 
And I basically, and I, you know, fought the best I could fight on that night and completely, you know, obliterated him for 12 rounds. Didn't you throw like a mad amount of I think punches? it was over a thousand punches, yeah. Jesus. So it was just my work rate, which was different, my work rate and speed. Obviously, you know, fighting Mikko Kessler in your home stadium, um, you know, 50,000 plus to watch every belt on the line. So, you know, I was uh, and sort of undisputed champion, won all the belts, ring magazine belt. So that was a great way to finish off my superweight career. And there's only two things left. I was going to America, which I think is a big deal to go to the States and win. Not yeah. just go to the States, but go to the States and win. And uh, be one of the best pound pound fighters in the world, uh, Bernard Hopkins, who, it was a tough fight, but you know, winning winning against Hopkins uh, was and being a two-way world champion as regards to Ring Magazine lineal champion, you know. Yeah. So I'm going to America. You can imagine. You know what I mean, fighting over here is great, but I'm at, you know headlining in Vegas with your name, name up in name up in lights, and it's it's quite surreal with the, the people in the audience, and uh, it was uh, a great experience, you know. So if you had to pick one. Oh, one. Yeah, pick one. What are you going I'd for? I'd say Hopkins, because we got paid the most money. <laughs> <laughs> ching, ching! No, Kessler was probably... I'd say Mego Kessler probably my, my uh, best performance because he was undefeated at the time. Right. You know, he was undefeated in 39 fights. Yeah. I was undefeated in 46 fights. He was younger. Yeah. You know, and it was, it was, you know, it was a tough fight, you know. Um, but, you know... Good times. Yeah, good, good times. Win, and you mentioned there the, with the fighting, and like the build-ups and all that. Did you ever like, because like footballers have like pre-match routine. Did you do the same thing? Yeah. Like before, I, in the, in the uh, change room beforehand? Yeah, I Music sort of, and... Yeah, I sort of done the same thing. So basically, I'd always be up ridiculously early in the morning of the fight. Now bear in mind, the biggest struggle for me was making the weight. Right. Now against Cast, I lost 34 pounds in like about 12, 14 weeks. Now I was just a big guy, you know what I mean? And uh, fighting at one weight for 12, 15, 13 years. Yeah. Having to make the same weight. When obviously in a decade you're going to be a bigger guy. You know, I was 36 at the time, 30, no, about 34, 35, and um, yeah, we were struggling to make the weight. So for me, making the weight was always the hard bit. You know, because what? Because I, I did this with um, Tony Bellew, and he said in the morning of the fight he had to lose four or five pounds, and he was saying, "I went on the treadmill for like an hour, nothing came off." Yeah. So his man said. Hot bath, like yeah. boiling hot bath with yeah. loads of salt. Yeah. Did you have to do stuff like that? Yeah, I basically, you know, I was trying to get blood out of the stone last couple of years of my career because I get the 12 stone two, a uh, pound over, two pound and up would be, I'd be like, obviously just completely dehydrated. Wouldn't have eaten for hardly much for a couple of days and um, dehydrated. So that was tough to get the last pound, two pounds. And sometimes I'd have to put a sweatsuit on and go in the sauna. And just Jesus. go back out, weigh yourself, go back out, weigh yourself. And I see my weight, bang, I'm on the weight. And then, oh, thank God. Then my father would just, that men's or my dad would just have the drink. So as soon as I weigh in, I just yeah. get off and just put about, you know, some, some, some weight back on. And just it's all about rehydrating and then being, being um, in a good condition for the fight night for 12 rounds. That's brutal, though, isn't it? Yeah. Sauna with a wet, what, what, what's, what's with it? a sweatsuit. <laughs> sweatsuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So for some reason, I just don't like saunas anymore. I'm not surprised. I'm going to say, hey, Dad, we got a sauna. I'm like, it's going to be flashbacks. Nah. Nah. Come on, Joe. Let's have it. Head down, get it straight up onto the dance floor. Oh, oh he's warming up here. He's warming up. Oh. Oh, I'll take it. I'll take he's it. He's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've got nine. Oh god. Nice shot. That's way too much. Ooh. Oh my god. Power. Jesus. <laughs> it's like an old Joe Galzaghi in the room. <laughs> Boom. Right, completely overclubbed. I know I've been told to overclub, but that was just redonkulous. So uh got to chip back on. Good shot. We good? Good shot. Got the thumbs up. Got the thumbs up. Oh, that's... Oh, go on. Oh! Too heavy. It's not a bad effort, pal. Too heavy. <laughs> not a bad effort. So, this is for a par. That is also for a par. And it's a one nil to tubes in the full hole challenge.
No. Calzaghi, mate. Pulled it. Joe Calzaghi for the Ooh. win. Ooh. Come on, mate. Was that for a, no. was it for a par? Oh, Go for a six. And for a six, tube still one up on the four-hole <laughs> challenge. You've just <laughs> off camera, he's just reminded me. He went, oh, so it's me to go, wasn't it? Because, you know, yeah, six, one up, shot. six all, six all. <laughs> he's got a shot on he? So it's actually 1-1 one, one in the four-hole challenge. Joe Calzaghi to throw first. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, it's a shot. It's a bit left. I all dropped right. it down there, mate. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. Not yeah. bad, mate. Oh, where's it go? What are you say? Strap in the air, look. <laughs> Absolute air Do time. So Joe, like, obviously 46 and 0, again, amazing. But for those first 20 fights, did, you didn't really get paid, did you? No, well, I mean, how does I that got happen? Pay, um, I suppose when I turned pro, um, I didn't really know too much regarding the business side of it. And I just wanted to turn professional. I mean, my father went up to London, I uh, met with Mickey Death Trail all us, and just turned pro. Yeah. I was on like a wage, um, like 300 pounds a week. I was like 20, 21 fights, 21 wins, 20 KOs, like Young Boxer of the Year, British Champion. And uh, at the time I was like struggling with my um, mortgage payments because in my semi detached, I had a boy, like the middle boy Joe was, was sort of born in, um, in 94. So, yeah, it was, it was tough. It was tough, and um, yeah, it was like, like I said, young boxer of the year. I was world ranked, but getting no TV um, exposure at the time. It's uh, Frank Warren was sort of taking over the yeah, monopoly, yeah. really, and um, that was that. I was British champion, and uh, I thought I needed to make a change, and which I did, you know. And I went with um, signed with Frank Warren. Yeah. But who was taking that money? Because you, you were a big draw back then. So yeah. Have some guys have gone, I'll pay you 300. Oh, yeah, well, I'll take the 20 I wonder, well, get paid well for it. obviously, I agreed to some sort of. I agreed to a contract, and obviously, the contract was, you know. Not very good. No. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> for me. <laughs> but hey, it's what keeps you hungry, man. At yeah. the end of the day, it's like. I made up for it afterwards, you know what I mean? I sort of made money, good money afterwards. But you know what? It's when I even when I look back at, at that, I don't, I, I have no. It's what it meant to be. It was my. It was, yeah. you know, thank God I managed to go through them times of injuries, you know, not getting paid much money, and still keep dedicated. And that was always be my dedication. It was not just about making money. It's all about being a world champion, yeah. and that will follow. And I think that was the difference with me. I was just determined to be a world champion, and you know, money was secondary. Obviously, we all need to make money. It's always yeah. nice to have good money, which comes with success, um, which obviously, you know, which I had a lot of, especially when I, when I beat you back in 97, but, um, you know, it was one of them things, man. Yeah, it was yeah. tough, it was tough. Um, but hey, you know, it was all about winning, which yeah, I managed man. to do, you know? And then get your money further down the line. Yeah. Yeah, good old Frank <laughs> Warren, yeah. good man. Yeah. Right, so tuck myself up, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm just gonna pitch and wedge it, and hopefully I can see the green around the corner. And do you know what? Another thumbs up from Joe Calze is good enough for me. It works. <laughs> it works. Right, nine iron. And this needs to go dancing. What a lovely course, by the way. Piglet. And great company. I love this so much. And I love it even more if I go dancing. Shot. Come round. I think. Yes! Uh, nice. We're dancing, Shot. Joe. We are dancing. I've turned up today. Come on! Come on, Joe. Ah! Oh. 
Oh. Ouch. Oh. No good. Joe, to do what you did in your career uh, must have been class, but it must have been even more special that you did it alongside your legend of a dad. Yeah, it been, yeah, it is, mate. It is too. Yeah, of course, like I said, my dad, you know what I mean? He sort of uh, took me to the boxing gym, you know, kept me motivated when I was young in my teenagers. Yeah. When he wanted to go off rails and, uh, you know, do a kids on video, you know what I mean? Just little bits and pieces and having girlfriends, like, things like that, you know what I mean? I sort of was tra trained like a pro at a young age. Yeah. You know, I was given the routine. Was it like getting up, the jogging? The yeah, 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 routine. So basically, routine. So get in the morning, do my training, come home from the gym, rain, sleet, or snow. I had to go for a run. Wow. I had to go for a run. Yeah. There was no. And there was no. no it was just my. You, you have to train like a professional. I think you know because my dad seen the talent in me at a young age and knew that you know, hard work, and dedication, and that drive. So I was instilled in me from a young age. And there's always these. What well, we say is saying like always train like a challenger. So when you train like a champion is when you get beat. You train like a challenger. And I think that's that sort of mindset was instilled in me. Yeah. It's, you know, like I said, listen, when you're a world champion in the ego and everything else, you know, that's when people get beat against fighters they're not supposed to lose against. Yeah. So if you are in tremendous shape physically and mentally, then you're halfway there. You know what I mean? No matter who's in the opposite corner. So I had that was instilled in me, train like a challenger from a young age. And yeah, he's... Um, what can they say, you know, to do what I achieved in boxing and become undefeated is very rare. And to be world champion in 11 years, win all the titles I wanted, beating the fighters I wanted to beat. And, you know, to share that with your father in your corner, it's, it's just special. I feel blessed that, you know, my father goes, you know, my dad Enzo could uh, share in all them victories. And like I said, we like the underdog story. Nobody yeah. really gives us a chance. You know, what my dad started training me as a professional, people would say, no, nah, that's never going to work. Yeah. You've got to get a proper professional trainer, this, but listen, it's we run conventional, mate. We run like conventional. Film, it's like a film. Yeah, it is. It is, mate. And uh, what can I say? I never lost my father in my corner. And I was from a 17 year old and retired when I was 36, 37. That's 20 years. I don't think that's ever been done before. Nah, that's amazing. And what, <laughs> you know, what a legend your dad was. Yeah, and also you. he was awesome. funny, wasn't he? Really funny. Oh, can you, can he you, was. Can you tell me the story about you, your dad, Mike Tyson and a photo. Oh, oh. <laughs> love yeah, this yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So, um, yeah, Mike Tyson obviously came out of prison and um, he was fighting Julius Francis. And uh, I was obviously on the undercard. That was the only world title on the bill. But still, when yeah. you're younger, you expect to get a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of headlines or whatever. But um, it was the Mike Tyson show, which was cool. You know, it was a great experience. So he, he came and trained at the Grosvenor for three or four weeks. Yeah. I, I trained there for um, a little bit. And yeah, so he just, listen, he just got there, you know, now, now, now in hindsight, I can imagine why he was <laughs> off, right? So, um, yeah, so it was a big queue and I'm like training inside the Grove now, you know, he, obviously I just won the world title. He didn't really know I was probably in, until he was introduced uh, to me. But anyway, he, he looked pretty off like i said you know he was like uh it was ridiculous i mean you know it was carnage right? was, oh yeah, yeah. i just carnage people on pictures and grabbing i'm just stood there i mean dad so i got a picture with my that's a picture of mike yeah and um he's basically so i'm, I'm next to you so i remember going there i went dad listen remember my dad's like five foot seven right yeah. he, don't, he don't give a shit, right so he's like so i said mike tyson just there you know and dad goes, Mike, you gonna, you gonna f a smile or what? And I'm looking at my dad, oh, thinking, oh. look at my Tyson over here. Are you? And you go, hey man, you know, it'd be a long day, man. Like, Sorry, man, it'd be a long day. And, you know, and I thought my Tyson gonna struggle my dad, mate. But he was like, all right, it's been a long day, man. And then, I, then I'll, I'll be honest with you, I had a picture with him. And then afterwards, I was like, I was a big guy. I my mates, oh, you know, Tyson, man, you want a picture? But not really realizing, obviously, he, you know, he was just, he didn't want to squash my dad, which was a good starter. Yeah. And um, afterwards, I, I remember speaking to him. He was great when, when he was on his own. Afterwards, we had a good chat. So, do, do you reckon your dad giving it back to him? Like, are you gonna, are you gonna, are you gonna f smile? Or are you gonna <laughs> I don't know. Well, do I'm not he, sure. Do you reckon he's gone? Oh, all right. I'm, well, know. I've still got that picture, right? And he just cracks some tiny, 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 tiny-ish and smiles, mate. <laughs>
<laughs> See, might have some sort of reaction on my dad. Your dad found the camera thought, guy. Yeah. Who's this little guy telling me what to do? Tyson. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Come on, nobody speaks to him like that. But it, it was all right. I spoke to Mike afterwards, and yeah. yeah, he's a lovely guy. You know, we had a chat with him, and and, and to fight on his on his card. Obviously, Mike Tyson, the greatest heavyweights, was you know, one of the things in my career that I'm uh, happy you know to to box. I think I've boxed twice actually. I boxed. On um, in Copenhagen, he boxed Brian Nielsen. I boxed on the card as well, but he just he was uh, an animal in the ring, wasn't he? Oh. You know, what I mean, at this peak, he was a, he was a great fighter. You know, it was uh, yeah, he was a, on a different level. Wasn't he? Yeah, I, imagine. I don't think my dad. I think I don't think you took my dad down. Nah, you took him down. Nah, you really got him, mate. Yeah. mate. Yeah. right over the end. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are yeah. you? Oh. It's a shot. Oh, it's not cheap, a bad mate. shot, mate. Your chipping's good. Your chipping is double decent. Oh. Great effort, that, mate. No, it's a good effort. This is for par. Oh, go on, mate. But it's, it's a horrible part. Yeah. S slopes. Um. Come on. Come around. Go on. Good shot. Go on. Oh, oh. lucky, mate. It's good effort. Good effort. <laughs> right. Good effort, mate. So, so this is fifth, and that's sixth. Ooh, so we okay. both take that out. So wait, should we both? Should yeah. We should, we, should we do gimme? No, no, no gimme. No gimme. No, no gimme. No gimme. No right. I gotta go first. Yeah. Come on. In for six, Mr. Carl Zaggy. Pressure. You <laughs> pressure the ball. <laughs> what an embarrass you wouldn't that? You got it, mate. You, give it to me. Yeah? No. <laughs> Get yes! in! You got that one, mate. He's back. He's back. One up. One up. One to play. Oh, I'd love this. <sighs> Come on. One up uh, with one to play. Can I beat Mr. Calzaghi? Oh. Oh, good it's shot. Gone low. <laughs> kept, it, <laughs> kept it low, but it's straight good down shot, the middle mate. again. It's got there. Cool. Oh, poor. Oh. Straight down the middle. Oh. His elbow's gone. Any excuse? My elbow, mate. <laughs> Joe, how did you find uh, life after boxing, you know, once you retired? Yeah, life after boxing, well, you know, when you've done something from such a young age, uh, you know, winning titles from age of 13 to your 36, and being at the best you can be in your in your profession in sport, you know, it's it's. Uh, I feel blessed, you know, and um, to retire and defeat it. But I suppose nobody really prepares you when you're uh, in top sport and so on. What, what happens afterwards? Yeah. And you know, when you retired mid thirties, which I did, and then you got the rest of your life ahead of you, it's it's easy for people to say, "Well, do something else you love." Yeah. All you ever done is fight. That's what you do. Yeah. So although you made the conscious decision, which I did, to retire when I did. And a lot of the reasons I retired, a lot of people don't know. I'll be honest with you, a lot of his personal injury problems about the years that I kept to myself. And uh, I just had to, uh, you know, decide when it was the time to retire. And it's, it's very rare for a boxer to retire on his own terms. Yeah. Not a boxer retire the fighter. I, I mean, you know, normally see the sport. So for me, it was it was great, but. Yeah, you know, I try to do a bit of acting, you try to do a bit of this, you do TV, you do the usual thing people do when they retire, but yeah. Just it, wasn't it, it, giving it to you, just wasn't. Um, it, was, it was tough, yeah. you know, it was tough. You know, people say, well, will you come back from boxing to boxing? But you know what, I made the conscious decision way before I retired, that was my time to retire. You know, me and my father, you know, fights I pulled out on, fights I boxed when I was injured. I've been injections in my hand for the last 10 years of my boxing career, you know, it's, uh, long, yeah? Right. yeah, yeah, I mean, I couldn't literally punch, 
So it was either not a fight or punch. That's why my style, I adapted my style due to my injuries. Yeah. So I use more combinations of speed. So it's good, I got hands, good hand speed. And they worked out great for me. But early in my career, if you watch my fights, I was very heavy handed, especially with uh, left hand. Um, but obviously I had to adapt my style yeah. afterwards. But yeah, going back to retiring, you know, it's, uh, it was tough. It was also tough on my father. I suppose when I retired, I didn't really think of the impact it had on my dad because it was a journey so together. Yeah. I know my dad could, you know, continue to train and, you know, train the two world champions and with Nathan Cleverly, although he wasn't at our gym at the time, he was, he's a part of our boxing gym. You know, we, we trained him from a kid. Yeah. Going till he won the title, you know? So yeah, it's tough. And, um, you know, now things is different in life. You know, I've got two sons. You know, 27, 24, Joe and Connor. So to me, it's important, you know, to be to be a good dad for them. And you're 10 months sober as well. Yeah, that's right, man. No, yeah, yeah, thank respect. you. Yeah, yeah, cheers, man. Yeah, thanks. Really so, respect that. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So, yeah, like I suppose, you know, during your career, you know, you go out, there's lots of uh, things to do. And, you know, um, for me, I suppose, you know, like things like drinking and things, you know, um, I wanted to. It's coming to 50 years old next year. I want to be healthy, you know, and uh, and so on. It's just one of them decisions I made, and uh, yeah, it's uh, feels good. It's good. No, I'm not having no hangovers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about. I've not had a hangover for over five years. Well, so. congratulations no, to thanks, you, mate. It's yeah. Just, it's, um, no, when I heard that you, you, you'd done the same as me, I was like, I was watching. I was like, you know, wow, it's like similarities because obviously you lost your dad, you know, and you know I lost mine, and my drinking was. Off the scale, and yeah, I think it's a similar sort of story. Yeah, I think that's I'm just what it not was. very hard and not yeah, people out. Yeah, hit the ball better than me, mate. <laughs> so, anyway, like I said, yeah, it was, it's been tough. Like I said, like me, me and my father were so close, you know, we have a close knit family, and you know, to suddenly lose your dad when you, you don't expect to lose your father at that time, and then my mother passed less than two years afterwards. So, yeah, it's been a really hard ride, and you know, God and dad, God tests us all, mate. Yeah, you know, and um, boxing is just. It's in, you put things in perspective after you retire, and it's like for me, because I've worked at the ring so long, boxing's not everything. I was blessed by doing the beautiful sport of boxing. I love the sport. It's given me a life, it's given my family a life, it's given me a name, it's, you know, that people re will remember to be in a, you know, inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Flame with man. fame, man, with De La Hoya and uh, Trinidad. It's like, that's a dream, you know what I mean, for me. So, and my family. So, my dad was so proud, my family was so proud. But you, people can't take that away, and I think it's all about realizing that that is the past, yeah. you know, and realizing that God give you a gift and I was blessed. And was it hard? Yes. Would I change anything? No, I wouldn't change a thing. I feel blessed to have been able to do something I love. Yeah. It's been tough, which I love. It's made it even more better, yeah. you know, to achieve something that's like an impossible, Absolutely. you know? And um, yeah, I just, you know, like I said, it's been tough, but um, you know, I'm trying to learn how to play golf again and uh, yeah, get my ass kicked good. by yourself, mate. Yeah, well <laughs> and, um, and yeah, just like getting the gym up and running again, like my boys, you know, Joe and Connor, they love the sport of boxing. And, and part for me is to continue the legacy of what we achieved. As a family, for the, yeah. Yeah, for our family, yeah. for this area, you know, yeah. as regards to, I haven't got to get a world champion at the gym. Maybe we can change kids' life, and that's what my boys are doing. We've got this, um, we, we teach young kids at the gym, um, kids oh. with problems and that, so on and so forth, and they love it. And maybe one day we'll have another champion from this area, world champion, who knows? So it's good to keep continue the legacy, and uh, I'll be supporting my boys, and hopefully, like I said, get another champion from this area. Absolutely. Joe and Connor, good luck. Um, Thank you. But do you not... Um Look at all these exhibition matches now on the YouTube yeah. box and go, I'd like to come out of retirement <laughs> absolutely flat. You know, do you know what? I have a look at these exhibitions, right? And yeah, I've had I've had I've had the Kaslev, I know I got my old nemesis, the Cobra. <laughs> well, no, no, he's talking, okay, leave me alone, that guy, will you? We actually but, did we did this. I, I know uh, but we did this yeah. and he was like yeah, Joe did never fancied it with me, bottled it and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What about, you and, what about you and Carl? Exhibition. Yes, well, that's the thing. Let me get into some shape, lose a bit of weight, but uh, no problem. No problem at all, mate. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Are you, are you, are you, are you mates now with Carl? Are you, uh, or are you, is it still? Are my mates with Carl? I haven't, no, I don't know mates with no, him at all. No, I haven't okay. spoken to him. I, I don't, like I said, at the end of the day, it's. Um, no. It is what it is, mate. Yeah. Like, I retired, what, in 2008? Yeah. I'm nearly 50. 
So, um, he's much younger, isn't he? Yeah, he's about yeah. five years. That's not very fair, is it? No. I still whoop his ass, though. <laughs> still whoop his ass. <laughs> get, it, get it on, <laughs> exhibition. <laughs> There and there's the shot. That's a bit better. It's gonna so fall short though. There we go. Just uh, in front of the bunker. Good shot, mate. Thank you, mate. Good shot, my friend. Right, Joe's just in front of the bunker. Joe also has a shot on me. So this has got to be good. Oh, you Sorry, mate. <laughs> Oh, in the Lewis bunk. Look at that. Come on, flop it on. This is my little niner. Get up. Oh. Awful. I ain't got my sandwich, so it's my little uh, nine iron. Good oh. shot. He's on the green. Yes, yes. keep rolling. Take that, <laughs> the rake. So Joe, uh, before I try and sink this putt, it's a question we ask everyone on the four hole challenge. If you could have a caddy for the day, anyone past or present, who would it be from any walk of life? No, yeah, it's a difficult one, mate. I know what, it'd be a combination of Abin Ali. Yeah. He'd be good fun. Absolutely. Uh, always been a, been an ex-legend fighter. Be an ex-Beatles fan, really. Well, John Lennon, mate, that would oh. be fun. Yes. Bought them on the Beatles, mate. So I knew all the Beatles try and love them. My mum and dad used to love the Beatles. And um, I'll come back to you on that, but that's a good combo, right? Yeah, that's good, good like that. Good. Muhammad Ali and John Lennon. Yeah. Take that all so day. Got a bit high. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. For a par. Come on, go on. No, he's left his shit. No, it's good again. line, actually. It's a short again, right. Yeah, it's a bit dodgy. This is your fifth shot, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Oh, oh, he's dragged it. For the win. For the win. Oh, you <laughs> head. <laughs> I don't right. know what you <laughs> <laughs> Still can't do it. Who cares who won? I think I'll. Go on, on, mate, you got it. But that was the Go on, I think you deserve it, mate. That well was done. So calm, Zay. Mate, well thank done, you so, so much, mate. Pleasure, thank really you. Really appreciate it, mate. It's an honour. Thank to you, mate. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Again, mate. Please like, subscribe. I love this channel. I love <laughs> this man. Boom.